Hello! This is Wizard Fu. Another video in the Low Dragger development series. This is video number two. And uh, today I'm going to be discussing why I chose to use C for this game. Um, I had considered using C because I was pissed off at how slow Songbringer was compiling. It compiled really slow. I wrote the game in C++ and I made one critical mistake that you'll find out in this video um, why it was compiling so slow. I considered using Jai, of course. Well, I, I wanted to use Jai. I really wanted to, but it's not ready yet. I can't use Jai to make this game. So it was either C or C++. Um, Songbringer, when you compile it, sometimes it takes maybe one second or more to compile each compilation unit. That's each C++ file. Uh, from my experience making games in C in the past, I found that it compiles super duper fast. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just write this entire game in C then. But I found out some important things. And uh, now's the time where I'm going to stop being a hologram and show you some code. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is a little test project that I created just to see if I wasn't um, wrong in my assumptions about C versus C++. I have been assuming that C is just faster than C++ and C++ is much slower to compile than C. However, this test proved me completely wrong. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This little test here compiles a bunch of different simple C++ and C files that basically just use the string. They, they use strings. This is all they do. They say the value of this string is this, and then there's some more. That's all they do. And here's the compilation speeds. So I created basically the same application in C, C++. I also did some other tests where I was like, well, let me try using the double elevens string. And I started using my own string class for kitfu. And then here, here's the here's the whiz bang. Here's the real meat of the of everything here. This is the string compiled in C++ using the STL. The basically the angle brackets string include as you can see, oh, let's do this again. Sometimes it, it takes a second for it to cache up its stuff. So there you go. That's a little bit more accurate of compilation speeds right there. You can see the C source file compiled in 0.11 seconds. It's pretty dang fast. Here's the exact same thing compiled with C++, though. Not very much slower at all. And then here's the... The important bit, this STL string class compiles at least a half second slower every time. That's 500% slower compilation speeds with one include file. Let me show you the source files here. This is how simple it is. This is the C version, right? It's just got a main function. All it includes is standard IO so it can print some stuff to the output and string.h so it can do its string functions. Uh, it starts with a blank C string array, copies in some stuff, prints it, adds some stuff to it, appending, and then prints that. Right? Pretty simple, right? Okay, let's go to the next thing. This is the exact same thing, except it's written or compiled with C++. I just put this in here, this uh, lambda function, just to prove that it is C++. I was kind of doubting it. And... I had no issues, of course. This is the this is the most important part here. Is this we're including C standard I/O? We could do C string right there, but I didn't. Whatever. Um, but this is almost the exact same source file, just the C plus plus version. Um, what else we have? Here's the important one, right? Okay, here's where we're using the STL. We're including I/O stream and string. 
And we start with the C++ STL string class. We reserve. We set it to something. We output. Okay? The exact same thing as the other files. But as you can see, the one with the STL compiles much slower. Why is that? Well, when you compile the STL, it liter it pollutes your namespace like crazy bad, super duper crazy bad. Just to compile, just to have the string inside your C++ file, it has to go and well, basically because it's a template, it has to go recompile string for every one of the compilation units that uses it. Um, I'm pretty, I, I may be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that it's still slow to compile even if you use a pre-compiled header. Um, because it still has to go and say, let's say you're using the strings constructor, for example. It has to go and even though it's pre-compiled that, that header for string, it still has to go and put that constructor into your source file. It has to go and basically create a version of that string constructor for your source file because it's a template. So, and it's a template with tons of arguments. The C++, the C++ string class is crazy polluted as far as how much stuff it has to add to a single compilation unit just to get it to compile. So anyways, and that's that explains why it compiles so much slower. It's producing all of these functions that it needs just to put the stream class into your source file. So there it is. That's basically the proof that I have that C can compile, or sorry, C++ can compile at just about the same exact speed as C pretty interesting stuff. So with this revelation in mind, I started something called KitFu. It's basically my own game engine wrapper layer around um, any game engine I want to put in it. And I've written my own string class. Well, actually, it's I've written my own. Let's do let's look, take a look at that. Actually, let's go take a look at KitFu a little bit. Here's string from KitFu. Um, it includes something called simple because it's wrapping a string class from Double Eleven's engine. Okay, this is not a good one to show actually. Let's show us something a little bit more simple. Maybe V3, oh yeah, V3H is a good one. This is a vector of three integers that represent a position. Um, what you can do to get super duper fast compilation speed with C++ is to make sure you're never including anything in your headers that is heavyweight stuff. Anything that uses a template is could be heavyweight. A string is one of the worst heavyweight things there is. The, the C++ STL string, I mean. Another thing you can do is use forward declarations as much as possible. So, um, the V3 class actually uses KitFu's string class, and all it has to do is because because it's not actually because this header file doesn't have to know how big the string is, it can simply just refer to it as a reference or a pointer. It doesn't need to actually have any of the details about string. You can just forward declare it and say, okay, there's a structure called string somewhere. I'm not going to define what it is. Or how big it is or anything like that I'm just gonna simply refer to it in this header file using references or pointers so that's what it is forward declarations for all your for all the stuff that you might use and then if there are any include files that you do include make sure they're super duper lightweight I've actually gone through and checked all of the include files like C standard in uh, C limits things like that these things are really, really lightweight. They're so lightweight, all they do is just define a few things, actually. They're not even including functions, some of these. So, this is a super duper lightweight header file that doesn't even require any other header, header files to be included for it to work. 
So what it does is it creates like pretty much lightning fast compilation. Let's go and uh, let's go re. I don't know how this is going to work, how fast this is going to be with uh, with me recording this video right now. But I'll go ahead and I'll re. I'll destroy all of my um, low dragger source files. And we'll go and build it here in Xcode, and you can see how long they take. Ah, see, so yeah, it's it's taking quite a lot longer than it normally does because I'm recording a video that's full screen and stuff like that right now. But as you can see, a lot of these source files, even though I'm even though I'm recording a video, are compiling in under a second. If I were recording a video and compiling Songbringer with all of its C++ STL string vector map includes these all of these would be above a second in fact most of these would be above three seconds some of them would be above seven or eight seconds and some of them would be up to like 20 to 30 seconds there's one particular source file I know of that is super huge so anyways we're getting at least five times speed improvement if not ten times the speed improvement in compilation speeds just simply by doing these 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 things forward declarations and making sure you're having super minimal headers so there you go there you have it that's basically one of the reasons I started writing kit foo it's just to have these uh, for for all the games I write in my future I can have this thing called kit foo which compiles super fast and is a game engine wrapper layer so I can swap out different game engines whenever I want. So, um, of course, you know, if you if you take a look at this, let's make all all again. C is the fastest of them all. Let's do that one more time so it caches things. C is slightly faster. Oh, it's proving me wrong right now. Anyways. Usually C compiles a little bit faster. Usually the first time I call Clang, it takes a little bit longer. Let's do it one more time then. There you go. See that? 0.01 seconds faster to compile the C version versus the C++ version. So anyways, C is slightly faster, but it's not really because it's C++. Or, I mean, it's not really... C++ is not really any much slower, fundamentally. It's just when you start including tons of templates. So, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you like this new format of doing these dev highlights videos. I'm going to be start doing these dev highlights more often because um, it's just sort of a fun new format for me to share things. Also, I can give you the full-on 1080p HD version instead of a live stream where I have to use like 720p because of my slow internet. Um, so these dev highlights videos, uh, you can get get basically the information of what I'm trying, what I'm creating with this game faster instead of having to watch a two-hour video of me doing a live stream or just me recording my screen for two hours. And uh, you can get things much faster. And also. Uh, you don't have to watch me stumble through tons of errors and and other kind of BS. But if you like watching me stumble through errors and and figure things out, then just watch the live streams. They'll be happening maybe once a week at least. And for the other days of the week, I'll do some of these dev highlights videos. So I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And uh, that's it. WizardFu signing out.